All right, today is the day. Actually, today is the day after the day because we are looking at this project, which we finished yesterday. This being the first mold off the RK Supercar project. Anyway, let's go take a look at how that process went in producing this mold. If you haven't watched the previous video to this, it might be worth going and seeing because this is where I created a machine to make these clay extrusions that uh, are gonna form the dam or the walls of the mold. And the radius here is about the same as this pen I found. So I'm using that to uh, bend these clay forms. They're gonna be the dams, what we'll call them from now on. And those dams are set up along the parting line marks that I have made on the body of the car. Once you get the dam lined up with the line, it's just a matter of pressing the clay down to stick it to the vehicle. There it is. So also the clay needs to be bent and maneuvered a little bit. So I have this little nylon block that I'm using to keep the clay right on the line as I push down the clay to bond it to the car. Just a matter of uh, taking these extrusions, placing them along the lines and joining them together. Of course, there are going to be a few joints that need to be spliced together, but that's pretty easy with this uh, oil base clay. It's just a matter of adding some clay at the joint, spreading it around, and then uh, filling in the gaps. And then taking a little sculpting tool and uh, smoothing off the clay to make a nice, good, smooth surface for the mold to form against. Now there is a tiny little gap that doesn't quite actually close against the surface. So I'm just making some little snakes, a thing we practiced for in uh, preschool. Hold little snakes, take a little tool and press them in and fill that gap. Of course you can't gauge exactly how much clay it's going to take so you just go ahead and fill it up a little more than is needed. Take some other kind of a tool. Clean it up. There it is, nice little straight wire edge from that tool right along there and clean it up nice and square against the surface of the mold. Anyway, we've got the main top surface dams put in place. Now this one's gonna run perpendicular to the tail of the car. Now I can stick it on, but gravity is going to have a little bit of effect on it here. So once I get it stuck to the car, I actually need to uh, make some braces to hold it up just while it's in the setting. Just took some pieces of wood I had, cut them off, put them underneath just to, like I said, keep gravity from pulling that clay down, so especially once I warm the shop up to set the resin clay will get a little bit softer. Once my dams are all ready, it's time to put some PVA releasing agent on. Go ahead and just spring that on in this step. The PVA goes on and then starts to dry. And while we're waiting for it to dry, I'm gonna go over to the cutting table and start getting my fiberglass ready. A layer of uh, fiberglass cloth and then a lot of fiberglass mat to uh, strengthen the mold. The PVA is dry so now I'm going ahead and putting on a gel coat colored in orange like I talked about a lot. All these layers need to be different colors when you do something. The gel coat is always good to have a contrasting color so you can see it when you pull the mold apart or make the parts in it. Give the gel coat a little time to uh, start to cure, just gets to the tacky stage. And I'm gonna put my first layer on. This is a uh, veil. A veil is just a, a super thin matte fabric with uh, random oriented fibers. Use the veil just so that when 
the gel coat shrinks up, you can't see the cloth weave. The cloth which we're putting on now. So the cloth is after the veil. The veil will eliminate any of the print through, as it's called. We don't want to see the print through that we'll actually recreate in the mold. So put the veil down, then lay our first layer of cloth. The cloth actually molds better than any other the materials, like the the mat. So we're going to put a layer of cloth on just so that we get one complete surface on the mold without any joint lines of fabric. And we can just get that pushed down into that still tacky gel coat. Once the fiberglass is down, just time to uh, take some of our resin and start to uh, put it on. I can talk through all this because there's going to be a lot of this uh, moments where I'm just uh, adding resin. We have finished the cloth layer. Now we're going to start doing the reinforcing with the fiberglass mat. I cut strips to go ahead and do the edges and start building up the flange against our dams. Now you'll notice on the bottom edge where that, that perpendicular dam, there's a little bit of a lip that's created when it rounds that corner. Now the mat is not going to make that transition very well, so I'm going to start filling that little bend. And here I'm using some fiberglass toe, or just pure straight fiberglass strands. I'm going to laminate them, start to fill that little gap. This will also help strengthen that there is a slight bend to this rear hatch, but still, I don't want that to flex at all once I get the mold done. So after the strands on, I'm also going to take some strips of fiberglass mat and just keep working on filling that so that when I go to the full size sheets of fiberglass mat, they will transition much better over that little drop off there. So I've got all the corners filled, the little drop off edge, time to put some mat on. Now here I'm taking a roller and go ahead and pressing the mat down. That will absorb some of the resin that's already there. We want to keep a resin to glass ratio. So using the roller to just go ahead and let the mat soak up the resin that's there before we start adding extra. Now with fiberglass mat, it has a binder in it that holds it nice and stiff or holds all the fibers together. Once the resin hits it, it starts to break that binder down. So here, go ahead and put some on, work your way across. Then once it's uh, absorbed in, you can go back and uh, start working it better. In fact, you'll see here that I'm about to put edges on again. And I'm actually going and painting the center line, just like taking a piece of paper when you're gonna build a paper airplane and licking it to make it bend really well. You just saturate the center of that piece of mat and it makes it bend nicely. Insert it in the corner, then go ahead and saturate the rest of it to get it to bond to the surface. Go ahead and uh, do the corners once again. So that I can go ahead and move from the corners and then to another large piece of mat 
So with the one layer of fiberglass cloth and two layers of mat, that's all I'm going to need for this small mold. That will get it stiff enough, but to make sure that it doesn't flex, I'm going to add a couple of sticks to it. So just cut some sticks to length. They don't quite make uh, the bend of the contour, but that's okay because I'm going to just cover them with more of this mat. A couple layers of mat to uh, bond them right to the surface of the mold. And they will prevent that mold from ever flexing. Same thing, just saturate the mat. Once it gets soft, then it'll bend and flex right around the sticks and bond well. There it is. The next day, the mold's hard, and I'm going to demold. But I'm not actually going to take the mold off the car, because it's going to be used to back up the next mold. So just take the clay off. I have a soft plastic chisel, just in case I slip. I don't want to mar the surface of the next mold with it. Clay comes off easily. Then of course, once the clay itself is off, then you can use the a tool to scrape off the last little bit of excess clay, ready for producing the next mold that'll butt right up against this piece as well. Hope you like that look at the first mold off the Airtay supercar because we've got a lot more to do. We have 11 more, follow all these parting lines, divide it into pieces, and be ready to start producing body parts. Um, we won't be showing you all those. It would be rather boring after 11 of the same thing, process over and over. But we'll be going and showing you a few of those because some will be a little bit different, some new things, some new techniques introduced. So hope you subscribe. Follow along and we will notify you if you're ringing the little bell at the bottom also to see those videos as they become available. Anyway, thanks for stopping by and come see us again.